So, you got some new Marvel stuff for me? Well, actually, sir, I thought maybe we could take a little break, you know? We've been churning out so much content, I think everybody could use a little breather. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. Right? All right, that should about do it. Yeah, that's good. So I'm thinking we do a secret invasion show. Oh, the shape-shifting Skrull storyline from the comics? That's the one. So Nick Fury's gonna come back to Earth, and let me tell you, he's old and miserable now. As all protagonists should be. Yeah, and so he's gonna meet up with Maria Hill, remember her? Oh yeah, we only got snippets of their partnership in the movies. It'll be cool to dive into that a bit more. Yeah, for sure. So she dies. Oh my god. Pretty much right away. Dang it. See, it turns out that some Skrulls are evil now, and there's a little faction of rebels that want to start World War III. What are they rebelling against? Nick Fury. What do you mean? See, he and Captain Marvel had promised to find them a new planet, but after looking around for like two years, they were like, ah, eh, no, there's, there's nothing out there. There's not no planets at all. Why don't they work something out like the Asgardians to have their own little place on Earth? Unclear. So now this Skrull named Gravik is in charge, and he hates Nick Fury and Talos. Uh-oh. And Talos' daughter Gaia is gonna be a part of this group, but then she's gonna realize, hey, maybe the Skrulls that want to kill a bunch of people aren't super nice. Ah, so she's gonna switch sides? She is. Um, Amazing. So Gravik basically wants humans to go to war and blow the planet up and live on it. Well, so what we're gonna get here is a super sophisticated spy thriller as Fury tries to stop these scrolls. Well, yeah, I imagine that's gonna be thrilling. You could really play with the shape shifting scroll thing, you know? They could be anyone at any time. Really create some tension in the scenes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have been good. Dang it. Wow. But you have some scrolls impersonating people, right? Yeah, but we just let the audience know who's a scroll pretty much right away. Like, Rhodey is a scroll. We just tell them that through a mirror. Well, that might be thrilling in its own way. Way. Maybe, yeah, maybe, I hope so. Anyway, so what else happens in this thing? Well, we're gonna reveal that Nick Fury's actually married to a Skrull. Oh. Yeah, so if you ever wanted to see Sam Jackson deeply make out with a green alien, this is the show for you, I guess. That is on my bucket list. I'd also like to see him make out with a bucket. Oh, yeah? Just Sam Jackson making out with anything, really. It's just fun to watch. Okay. Samuel L. Jackson tonguing stuff is tight. All right, anyway, so Gravik gives himself extremist powers using this radioactive machine he has. Okay. And he wants to give himself a bunch of superpowers and become a super scroll. So he wants World War III and also superpowers and also like a house. That's right, so he can walk around all green-like. And for that war thing, he tries to kill the U.S. president and blame it on the Russians. Very sneaky. Yeah, and during the attack, frickin' Talos dies trying to save the president. Oh, extremely sad. I mean, I think. I kind of remember him from Captain Marvel. Yeah, he was in that. And, you know, maybe a post credit scene. Had a, there, I'm, there's no way I'm checking. Totally fair. Anyway. Anyway, so then Rhodey the Skrull advises the U.S. president to drop a big old bomb on the Skrull hideout in Russia, which would start World War III. Uh-oh. And so Gravik tells Fury, hey, I'll call off the strike if you bring me all the superhero DNA you scraped off the endgame battlefield, you big DNA-collecting weirdo. So hey, why doesn't Nick Fury call the Avengers? That's kind of his move, isn't it? Now we're actually gonna address that. Fury's gonna be like, no, this is way too personal. I gotta do this myself. And also, we can't rely on superheroes all the time. He's gonna risk the end of the world because he feels like this is a personal situation? That's right, it's personal. No superpowers. So what does he do? He sends Gaia to go get superpowers and fight the fight for him. But So Gaia shapeshifts into Nick Fury and goes to this super radioactive hideout and pretends to be dying from radiation and whatnot. Okay. And so then when Gravik gives himself the powers, it also gives them to Gaia. What if he had just shot Fury or not kept him inside the machine with him? Well, it worked, so get all the way off my back about the plan, and then it's time for a final showdown between these two. It's time for Nick Fury's personal fight. That's right, and so Gaia and Gravik start punching each other with a bunch of recognizable superpowers. Like what? Well, like Gaia flexes Drax's muscly arm with the tattoos. Are his tattoos a part of his DNA? Hey, shut up, and she has ghosts' powers, you know, ghosts. Ghosts couldn't really control those powers and also wasn't at the endgame battle. Hey, shut up, and Mantis has mind control powers to put Gravik to sleep. How does she know how to use those powers? Hey, shut up, and Ebony Ma's magic rings. How are rings a part of someone's DNA? Hey, shut up, hey, shut up. Haven't we established that magic is something you learn? Hey, shut up. Well, okay then. Okay, great. So punch, 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 power beam, punch, 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 backflip, probably. Very exciting. But hey, if they both have those extremist healing powers, it's gonna be hard for one of them to win. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, guy is gonna punch a big hole in his chest, and so that does it. He's dead now. Why does that do it if he has healing powers? Because the fight's over now. That worked. Oh, okay. Oh, and while that's happening, there's gonna be a tense showdown between Fury and Rhodey and the president. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and Fury's gonna be trying to convince the 
president that this freaking guy is a Skrull. Well, if only there was a way for them to identify the Skrulls. Well, throughout the whole show, they're going to be shooting Skrulls because they bleed purple, so that, you know, shows it. Why not do that now? Because this way we can have a couple of minutes of manufactured tension. Smart. And so after those couple of minutes are over, Fury's going to shoot Rhodey and reveal he's a Skrull. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. Then the president's gonna go on TV and declare all off-world species as enemy combatants. Oh, he is. And people are gonna go nuts. There's gonna be vigilantes running around shooting political leaders and stuff, trying to find the Skrulls. It's gonna be absolute chaos and paranoia. You know, that actually sounds like a more interesting secret invasion show. Yeah, well, Nick Fury has to leave Earth now, so we're not doing that. He's leaving, but he arguably showed up and made the situation a whole lot worse. Yeah, so now he's gotta go. He's gotta get out of there. All right. So what do you think? Uh, I think it sounds like a pretty good show. And hey, I'm picturing some cool, like, AI generation generated intro credits, that'll really be cool. Ow! Oh, you're starting to use AI for stuff, huh? Yeah, but you don't have anything to worry about. We're just gonna start using it for stuff like art and, you know, ideas and acting and voice acting, background acting, script writing. Oh, <laughs> please don't. No, I mean, AI is getting really good. What's the alternative? Pay fair wages to human people for all the jobs you just mentioned? You sound insane. We don't do that now. I know. Anyway, let's spend $200 million on this and reshoot a bunch of it and chop it up in the editing room and dump it on a streaming service. We can do no wrong and this system has no flaws. Hi everybody, Ryan George here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that pitch meeting. That's... That's pretty much it. That's all. I gotta stay here for, like, to give you time to press buttons if you want to, but that's really all I had to say, so...